Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mansa and today we are doing all things chocolate. Mm -hmm. You guys are getting five chocolate recipes that I have featured on this channel and I have put them together for your convenience. The holidays are coming up. Put this up on your TV, save it for later and thank me as well. You're going to get different types of chocolate flavors going on in these different recipes, but a scotch, you're going to get some chocolate cherry you're gonna get triple chocolate you know chocolate peanut butter name it you got it over here so if you are a chocolate fan like me let's get right into today's video <music> y'all today's video i'm gonna be showing you how to use a box cake mix and turn it into this delectable peanut butter chocolate poke cake yes baby you heard me right okay so we're gonna start off with a large bowl and we're gonna do uh, dry ingredients of course you're gonna need a box cake mix and you guys would already know my favorite is duncan heinz and I have the devil's food cake mix, which is a chocolate cake. And I also have the dark chocolate fudge cake mix. You can use any of these. So just to get it more airy and lump free and just make a uh, mixing process a lot easier. I'm just going to go ahead and sift that. And as you can see, there were quite some big lumps in there. So I'll just go in with my spatula and break them up. Now the second dry ingredient we're going to be using today you need some instant chocolate pudding mix and this is the 3.4 ounce pack and this is the brand that i always like to use this jello brand but just make sure that it's instant pudding no matter what brand you're using so i went in and added that to my cake mix and just go in with a with a whisk and just combine everything together those are our dry ingredients just two and we're going to put that on the side and move on to our wet ingredients so in another bowl i am going to start off with some eggs now the recipe calls for three eggs and most of the time you will see me add an extra egg but i am not adding an extra egg this time and i'll tell you why and it's going to come out just as perfect so going in with my whisk just to you know break up those yolks and all of that make a uh, whisk that really good and the recipe on the back of the box calls for half a cup of vegetable oil i am going to add just that because vegetable oil is really important for chocolate cakes oils in general make your chocolate cake really really moist now i am going to add an extra one fourth cup of melted unsalted butter the butter adds more flavors while the oil will bring it more of that moisture okay so now to replace the cup of water i'm going to be using one cup of buttermilk at room temperature we already know we are not doing water at all and this is the reason why i did not add an extra egg next i'm going to be adding about one teaspoon of vanilla extract to bring in all those flavors together and just go ahead and combine it with my whisk now you will realize that because of I'm using buttermilk this mixture is gonna get thick and so will the batter but do not worry that's where all the moisture and the deliciousness is gonna come from now it is time to combine our dry and wet ingredients together and by this time please make sure that you're preheating your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit because this just takes a few minutes and you're done now going in with my hand mixer I am just following the instructions on the back of the box which is to beat this on low speed for 30 seconds and then on medium high speed for an additional two minutes so that's all i'm doing here this is the only time i follow the instructions on the back of the box now you can see my batter is super super thick you can see that from uh, my beaters now it is time to bake i am using a 9 by 13 baking pan and i'm going to use some pan baking spray which already contains flour to just you know lightly coat that and go in with my silicone brush to distribute that this batter is so thick y'all it's almost like a pound cake batter and that is all because of the buttermilk that we used instead of like a lighter version like just ordinary whole milk but don't you fret it's gonna come out just fine and it's gonna be airy just the way we want it 
So once we get that all in, level it out as much as possible, and then we're going to bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out dry. And here we go. This is out of the oven right now. You will see that the sides of the cake will begin to pull away from the pan towards the middle. This is an indication that you're done. So let it cool down for about 10 minutes and we move on to the next step. We're going to make our peanut butter mixture using only two ingredients, uh, creamy peanut butter and uh, sweetened condensed milk. Now I am using Jif, but feel free to use any um, creamy peanut butter of your choice. The main, the key word here is creamy, okay? So, because it's easier to blend it. So I'm gonna pour in one can. This is a 14 ounce can of condensed milk, the sweetened one. And we're just gonna combine these two ingredients. These, this is gonna be what we would pour over this cake because remember this is a poke cake. So my cake just cake came out of the oven. While it's gonna rest for about 10 minutes, I'm just gonna go ahead and combine this. And this is what we're working with. Now let me tell you, this mixture right here, try not to eat all of it. It was so good, so, so delicious. So now our cake has rested for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead with the back of my spoon uh, wooden spoon to poke holes all over the cake. This will allow the cake to just absorb all of that peanut butter mixture that we just made and it would penetrate in there and just make sure that you're not going deep onto the bottom of the cake, okay? Just going about two thirds of the way so that you're not, you know, poking all the way through. And once we get those um, pokes into this cake, as you can see, the cake is still hot, by the way, which is what you want. We're gonna go ahead and pour in all of our peanut butter mixture okay you would see that it's really thick and this is because of the condensed milk that we use but it's okay the cake will still absorb what it can and then the rest will just form like a layer on the top of the cake which is just extra deliciousness and here is a cake. You can see that it's already starting to absorb that peanut butter mixture. So we're gonna let this sit down and cool all the way down to room temperature. You can even put it in your refrigerator. In the meantime, I'm gonna make the last layer on the top. Here, I have one fourth cup of creamy peanut butter. And to that, I am just gonna try to soften it up a little bit more and I will be adding one eight ounce pack of Cool Whip. If you don't wanna use Cool Whip, feel free to make your own whipped cream and use eight ounces of it. But you guys already know we like to keep it super simple, super easy. And besides, Cool Whip is delicious, in my opinion. So we're gonna dump in the whole eight ounce tub in there and just mix it, that's all. The peanut butter and the Cool Whip is gonna form the top layer of this beautiful cake. This is my mixture, it is already done and as you can see, it is still light and foamy. Now, it is time to put everything together. Now my cake has been resting and it is now um, cool. Now, I am gonna go ahead and just dump the, the Cool Whip mixture on the top. As you can see, it has just formed this nice crust over the top with the condensed milk. And <laughs> Y'all, it is so, delicious let me tell you it is so good try it do not take my word for it try it and let me know now i'm just gonna go ahead and spread that evenly over the top of the cake and then when it comes to toppings feel free to just you know experiment with it now for me i am going to be using some reese's peanut butter the minutes now I went in and cut them up into quarters, so I cut them into four. They're little, really tiny, so you could just cut it in the middle if you want. So this is how mine looks like. I cut them into four pieces, and y'all, it was it just added that extra touch of chocolate and a peanut butter for this cake right here. I also went in and drizzled some Hershey's um, chocolate syrup and also some caramel syrup on it and even added some extra peanut butter on the top and this is what it looks like y'all can't nobody tell me nothing this is just so delicious now at this point i'm just going to top it off with my chopped reese's mini peanut butter cups and that was it it is done you can just refrigerate it at this point until you are ready to serve your family or your guests, your loved ones, whoever you are making this cake for now of course i'm gonna have to cut into it so we all see what we're working with. This right here, like I said, if you get to try it, please tag me on Instagram or Facebook. My handle is also Mansa Queen, just as the name of the channel. 
And y'all, can you see how soft this is? It is so delicious. Let's 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 just get into it right here. And the layers were so perfect, it gave me the right amount of peanut butter and a chocolate at the same time. And the cake itself was so moist, super, super soft, and I am loving it. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, today we're going to be making a very soft and fluffy chocolate cake. Guys, sometimes all you want is a good chocolate cake, whether it's holiday time or not especially if you got kids so without wasting much of your time let's get right into the video and we're also going to be making our own homemade frosting so i've been getting a lot of requests to do a box cake hack on this so i am going to be using a duncan heinz dark chocolate fudge box mix today you can use the german um, german chocolate box mix or any box chocolate mix of your choice so here we go now since i'm trying to build layers of chocolate i will be adding a pack of chocolate fudge instant pudding this is the 3.4 ounce pack and it would add a lot of richness to this cake now also building up on that chocolate flavor i will be adding one tablespoon of 100 percent um cocoa powder now i am using the dutch process because it's really rich and it's dark so just one tablespoon of that it would elevate a lot of those flavors so those are uh, dry ingredients just stir them together make sure they're well incorporated and now in a smaller bowl we're going to mix our wet ingredients here i have four eggs at room temperature now the box does request for three but i'm adding an extra one for that extra fluffiness that i'm looking for so that just stir that a little bit whisk it up and now i am adding one cup of whole milk yes so i'm just replacing this with the water a, on the box and of course i'm going to be adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract i will also add one tablespoon of instant coffee now i get a lot of questions why i add coffee but believe me coffee elevates the taste of chocolate it is usually part of really nice bakery style chocolate cake so just try that if you have never tried it it's not going to be overpowering or taste like coffee and for our fat, I will be using some vegetable oil today. Oil is perfect for chocolate cakes. Trust me, if you want that moist, really nice, soft and fluffy chocolate cake, opt for vegetable oil or any type of light oil instead of butter and you will love it. Now it's time to mix our dry and wet ingredients together. Now also preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit because this recipe is so quick to make. So just preheat your oven while you're mixing so that when you're done you'll just be ready to put it in the oven now i just go in with my whisk and just combine them for about 30 seconds or so and then i would go in with my hand mixer and just beat this for two minutes so this is basically just following the box instructions at this point okay so i think i went i bit it probably for about two a little bit of two and a half minutes no more than that okay and then once that is done this is what our batter is going to look like as you can see it is nice it is not too thick it is not thick at all as you can see it is still a little runny now since we're going to be layering this cake i am using two nine inch pans now going with a non-stick cooking spray this one contains flour so it would ensure that my cakes don't stick you can also use a parchment paper if you don't have cooking spray all right or both now isn't that satisfying to watch <laughs> i always like it when it folds like that all right so now you just want to divide the batter into two try to be as equal as possible okay and then i'm just going to shake it pop it drop it to release extra air bubbles and into our oven it goes 350 degrees fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes in the meantime we're going to go ahead and make a chocolate frosting here i have two cups of whole milk yes guys this is something that we're going to put in the fire for a little bit so stay with me i am adding one cup of sugar to that and also half a cup of that dutch processed cocoa powder really nice and rich 
and to thicken our frosting i am going to be using about four tablespoons of all-purpose flour you can also use cornstarch if you do not have all-purpose flour at home now all the ingredients that i'm using are going to be listed in the description box below a lot of people ask me just simply click on the title of the video a text box will collapse and that is the description box okay click anywhere on the title of that video now I have added some butter to this and now I am putting it on the fire and you want to keep stirring constantly I am using my Kerrygold salted butter and I ended up using six tablespoons of butter just keep stirring it and you would notice that it would thicken up the reason why you want to keep stirring is you not want the flour to lump up even though we have already um, mixed it now this is the finished product I've cooked it for about five to six minutes and once it thickens let it sit down and cool completely but in the meantime I am going to be adding some vanilla extract and this is just about one teaspoon of that just stir that and now let it cool down all the way to room temperature and then put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour you want this to thicken up on its own okay this frosting is so nice and easy so now you want to put it in the refrigerator to cool down completely and in the meantime our cakes are out of the oven look at that beauty let me tell you this cake is so bouncy so soft so moist so you want to insert a toothpick in the middle and when it comes out dry then your cake is definitely done so you just want to let it cool down all the way to room temperature now you can see that mine kind of rose a little bit over the top so i have to make sure that i cut off that part just to um make it more seamless when i'm layering the cake so that's all i'm doing if you were enjoying this video please go ahead and support your girl by clicking on the like button give it a thumbs up because it really helps me it encourages me to do more for you guys thank you so much and if you're a first timer here you are absolutely welcome my name is mansa queen and the purpose of this channel is to make cooking more enjoyable and less of a chore. So now as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and frost my cake. I put the bottom layer, then I'm frosting as much as possible. This frosting is just enough for this amount of cake. So just follow the recipe again. All the ingredients that I use as well as written instructions will be in the description box below. And you guys, this is a final result. Remember the pieces of cake that I cut off the top? I used that and just crumb it up. And that's what I used on the sides of this cake. That's why it looks a little rough, like a little, little rugged edge to it, okay? Now we're going to cut it. You can see the bounce in here. Can you see that bounce while I'm cutting it? There you go. You can tell that this cake is really, really soft. It is so fluffy and take a look at what it looks like on the inside this is so nice so moist so so delicious and it tastes so gorgeous it is even better when you shade with a loved one hey friends so today we are gonna be making triple chocolate muffins mm -hmm. you heard me right i am gonna be incorporating three layers of rich decadent chocolate in these muffins and they are going to be absolutely moist and delicious so we're going to start off by preheating our oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit so in a bowl i am going to start off with my dry ingredients here i have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour already sifted to that i am going to be adding this dutch processed cocoa powder from Ghirardelli and this is my absolute favorite I am using half a cup of that feel free to use whatever chocolate powder you have but this is what I would highly recommend to that I am going to be adding one teaspoon of baking soda and I'm also going to be adding some salt as well and next I am going to be adding some coffee some ground coffee you only need a little bit i'm only adding about half a teaspoon of that and this is the brand that i use chocolate and coffee i promise you were match made in heaven absolutely delightful so i'm going in with my whisk and just mix it together and do not forget to also add your sugar because this recipe is going to be so simple you don't even need a mixer you could do this whole thing with just your whisk so i'm adding in one cup 
of sugar. So in another bowl, I am going to start off with my wet ingredients. Here I have one large egg at room temperature. Yes, you only need one egg and I promise you it's going to be so moist. I am also adding six tablespoons of melted butter. Now over here, you would need two thirds cup of whole milk. Now I did not find whole milk. So what did I use? Buttermilk. Be creative and let me tell you buttermilk, if you know, you know, add so much moisture to your baking. So it was perfect. Of course, I'm going to go in with a healthy splash of vanilla extract for that flavor. And another start of the show, you're going to need half a um, cup of a sour cream at room temperature. The sour cream is going to add in a whole lot of moisture added to um, that buttermilk. Absolutely delightful. You would love it. So these are our wet ingredients. I'm going to go ahead with my mixer and just combine all of this. Now it is time to mix our wet and dry ingredients together. Now to this, I am adding half a cup of warm water. This will lighten up the batter and also activate all this chocolate and um, coffee flavors in our muffin mixture. So it would make it also really light. So I'm just going in with my spatula and scraping the sides so that everything is going to be well incorporated. So here we are. I am going to be using my 12 cup um, cupcake pan. And I'm going to reinforce that with my pan baking spray, which already contains flour. Then go in with my silicone brush and just, you know, rub it all over just so my cake will come out easily. If you don't want to do this, just simply line it with some um, cupcake liners and you should be good to go. So I just go in and scoop it into my prepared pan. Remember, our oven is already preheated to 350 degrees. This recipe is so simple, so easy. You can be done in minutes. And you guys know cupcakes don't take too long to bake. Also, I forgot to mention, you can add your chocolate chips to your batter before scooping it. And I am gonna add mine right now. Into our oven it goes for 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. In the meantime, I'm gonna start off with my simple chocolate frosting, okay? I am adding in some salted butter. I ended up using one stick, which is eight tablespoons of salted butter. Once I get all my butter cream, then I am going in with my powdered sugar. So I end up using one and a half cups. You can add up to two cups. So you would also need, of course, some chocolate powder. Not a whole lot. I used two tablespoons of the same Ghirardelli dark processed chocolate powder. And then also I went in with three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. If you do not have that, just use regular whole milk. And then what you want to do, you want to beat this until the sugar is dissolved and everything is well incorporated. I also went in with some almond extract and this right here was the bomb. It just gives this uniquely complex flavor, which I absolutely love. You can feel free to use vanilla extract or any extract of your choice. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it into a piping bag because of course I'm going to be using it to frost the muffins. Now here we go. My cupcakes are all done and they have rested. They are cool to the touch. And can you see? the chocolate chips melting really nicely on the top. Let me tell you, if this is not decadence, I don't know what this is. The muffins on their own are so delicious. You really do not even need that frosting. If you want to cut down that sugar, feel free to omit the frosting. But of course, I'm going to frost it up for you guys because I know we enjoy all of that. This is our final product. So beautiful. You could do this with your kids. You could do this with your grandkids. It's so simple, so easy. You could have this any day of the week. And can you see what the inside looks like? You can see those chocolate pockets peeking through. That's why I said it's layers and layers of rich decadent chocolate. Super soft, super delicious. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Mansa, and in today's video, we're going to have a fun treat and make some chocolate cherry cupcake. Mm-hmm. You had me, girl. It is so delicious, and we're going to make a very simple buttercream cherry frosting, and of course, top it off with some cherry on top. So we're starting off with a Duncan Hines 
devil's food cake mix now you can use any chocolate flavored cake mix of your choice you can use the regular duncan Hines chocolate cake mix if that's what you have now of course you know i'm a fan of adding pudding mix to my box cake mixer so i'm using the chocolate fudge today and this is a 3.4 ounce pack of that instant pudding mix now in a large bowl we're going to start off by sifting my cake mix a lot of the cake mixes come out very lumpy so i find it very helpful to just sift it out it helps to just aerate the mix you know and get it all incorporated more easily and then i will add the instant pudding mix it's usually not lumpy at all so i just go ahead and dump that in using a spatula or whisk just combine everything together and set aside very simple and easy now in another bowl we're going to start with our wet ingredients here i have four eggs at room temperature as you guys know this is an extra egg because the recipe does ask for three eggs that's all so going going in with a whisk i'm just going to try to break this up a little so that it will be easier when i go in with my hand mixer now this is what the instruction um asks for it asks for one cup of water and one uh and half a cup of a vegetable oil but you already know we're not following the norm all right so i'm going to use the half a cup of vegetable oil that it does request for because oil makes cakes very very soft and moist however we're also going to add half a cup of melted unsalted butter i always like to double the fat because of all these additions and butter just gives a more complex flavor as well now here i am replacing the one cup of water with half a cup of half and half because i'm doing a chocolate cake and i'm also using half a cup of the cherry liquid the liquid that came with the maraschino cherries that i got this is what it looks like i just got it from walmart they're a great valley brand you can use any brand of your choice so that is what i use to replace the one cup of water that the recipe states now to bump up our flavors i am using one teaspoon of vanilla extract and one teaspoon of cherry extract if you don't have that use any fruit extract strawberry works perfectly in this recipe as well and you're more likely to find a cherry um a strawberry extract um in the stores now we're going to combine our wet and dry ingredients as you can see and i would do this by using my hand mixer if you do not have a hand mixer just go in and um with your whisk and just combine it or just simply a spatula now going on low speed i would just combine all the ingredients and then i will increase my speed to medium high and just beat it now very important whenever i make um chocolate cakes i always like to add coffee so this is my instant coffee i just used it to make one fourth of a cup of coffee so just if you have any prepared coffee from leftover from breakfast just warm it up now as you can see very important point this time i am using warm coffee i actually just made it so it was actually hot <laughs> so just dump it in there chocolate cake pairs perfectly with hot water it just helps to build up that structure of the cake when you are done so that's all the ingredients that i have in there again they will all be listed in the description box below now i have gone ahead and lined my um, baking pan this is a 24 cup capacity so i'm going to try to make it work over here you can even go with a little bit more but i think the 24 was perfect for this amount so i'm going it with my um, spoon this is just a one tablespoon um, a measuring spoon just to make sure that i get the batter evenly distributed you don't have to do all this you could just eyeball it and just go ahead and scoop that batter in there by this time you should preheat your oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit um, i know some people like to bake um, cupcakes at 400 degrees fahrenheit which is totally fine whatever you do is totally fine just make sure that you're regulating your baking time now i'm gonna have to go in with some maraschino cherries right now and just put drop them in the middle i don't like to put the cherries folded in the batter because sometimes you have you tend to have more cherries in some cup than others so i prefer to just scoop out the batter first and then i will go in and drop the cherries you could do more than one i just did not have more than enough so i'm just going one per cupcake and it'll be perfect now i quickly go in with the back of a spoon just to push the cherry in there so that it will bake more evenly and just not be popping on top of the cake so that's all i'm doing it is optional you really don't have to do it once the cake the cupcake rises the cherry will definitely be engulfed in it so now i'm baking at 350 degrees fahrenheit for about 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out dry now this is what our cupcake look like straight out of the oven i'm gonna let it cool down all the way to room temperature and in the meantime we will make our frosting 
And in here, I have two and a half cups of confectioner's sugar. I am just sifting it um, right now. And I really, really like this sifter. I got it from Home Goods. Really cute. And in there, I will be adding one cup, which is an equivalent of two sticks of butter. You can use salted or unsalted butter. Just when, But when you use unsalted butter, you go ahead and add a pinch of salt um, in your frosting just so it would balance out all the sweetness okay so i'm using salted butter and you can go ahead and mix this whip it until it becomes really nice and airy and very fluffy as you can see now i am going in with half a teaspoon of vanilla extract i really really like the taste of vanilla in there so to loosen up a buttercream frosting i went in with some liquid from the cherry the maraschino cherries i started off with two teaspoons but i ended up using about three to four teaspoons so again just use it to the right consistency i'm also using some red food coloring this is optional but i just wanted that little more hint of pink in this frosting which is why i use the red food coloring so just go ahead and mix all that and once you achieve the consistency that you like go ahead and put it aside by now uh, my cupcakes have um, cooled down all the way to room temperature and i have my frosting in my piping bag you can just use anything of your choice freestyle it so i'm just gonna go ahead and frost this um, cupcakes to my little heart's desire <laughs> Guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. And if you are, please go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. It is free of charge. And it just helps this channel go a long way and help more people to see it. Now, to top this off, of course, we're going to have that cherry on top. Of course, you know, we got to have it, girl. And this is our final product. Look at that. It is so beautiful, so simple, so easy. This is one thing that you can even do with the grandkids, with your kids. Just like a fun project. Hey, let them have fun. Play with the ingredients. If you do not have any half and half, go ahead with buttermilk. You can never go wrong with buttermilk. If you don't have any of those, go ahead with some whole milk and it would turn out perfectly. What's up, friends? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mansa, and in today's video, we're going to do another box cake hack. And this time, we are making a butterscotch chocolate chip cake. Mm -hmm. You heard that right. Look at those chocolate chips picking through so delightful let's get into the video we're gonna start off with our dry ingredients in a bowl so today i am using duncan hines perfect Moist french vanilla cake mix if you don't have this just simply use the duncan hines classic yellow cake mix they use the same ingredients so you're technically just gonna follow the same recipe okay all right so for today i just opt to use the french vanilla because it's been a while since i worked with it all right And per usual, I'm going to start off by sifting the cake mix to get rid of all the lumps that are in there and also just to air it, the flour mixture and just make it easier to work with, right? And then the second dry ingredient today, it's going to be this instant pudding mix, which is the butterscotch flavor. If you don't have that, you can use the French vanilla, but you're going to be missing a huge part of this recipe. So yeah, I am using this jello butterscotch instant pudding mix. And y'all, it's going to give it that slightly brown color and just so much flavor. And it pairs so beautifully with the chocolate chip. Trust me on that one. Yeah, just whisk to incorporate. And then those are our dry ingredients. We're going to put it aside. And then in another bowl, we're going to start off with our wet ingredients. So here I have four eggs at room temperature. The recipe typically requests for three eggs, but I added an extra egg for more richness. And in place of the one cup of water, I'm going to be using one cup of a heavy whipping cream. And it's going to add so much deliciousness. Also, I am adding one fourth cup of vegetable oil so just a little bit instead of what the recipe asked for and then i'm using half a cup which is one stick of melted unsalted butter and this pairs so well with the oil and then i would add a dash of a vanilla extract again all the ingredients i use will be in the description box. I would leave a link to the direct recipe on the website. Once you click on it, it takes you directly to this particular recipe and feel free to check out more recipes on the website as well. So now it is time to mix a uh, dry and wet ingredients together. And then I would go in with my hand mixer. You can use a whisk to do this if you do not have a hand mixer, but it's just gonna take a little while. So here I follow the instructions at the back of the box, which is to beat on low speed for 30 seconds and then beat on medium high speed 
for um, an additional two minutes. Do not forget to scrape down the sides of your bowl. You can see that the mixture is becoming a little brown and that is because of that butterscotch um, instant pudding mix that we added in there. But do not worry, it's gonna be so perfect. I know y'all are like, Mansa, you said chocolate chip. Where's the chocolate at? All right, here it is. I am using one cup of chocolate chips. And y'all know this is the brand that I like, this Ghirardelli. And this is the Dutch process. So it is dark and very, very rich. So I am just tossing it in about two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And the reason I do this is to make sure that the chocolate chips do not just, you know, sink to the bottom of the cake. We want them all suspended within the cake so that each bite is going to be full of that chocolatey flavor. So that's a good tip right there. And now I'm gently folding in the coated um, chocolate chips into my batter. It is now time to um, prepare a pan and I am using um, pan baking spray and this already contains flour. And I am using a bundt pan today. This is about a 10 or 12 cup baking pan and it is perfect for this recipe make sure that you go in and with your brush and brush into all those nooks and crannies so that your cake comes out perfect and beautiful so yeah pouring all that good batter into the cake and by this time i have already preheated my oven to 350 degrees fahrenheit because this takes such a little time to put together it just takes a few minutes to put together and then you are ready to bake. And once I dump it all in there, I go in with my spatula to, get, to try to get everything um, even as possible. This is a thick batter, by the way, because, of, because I used the heavy whipping cream. All right, so I'm popping it, dropping it. You know how we do it. And now we are ready to bake. So into our oven, it goes. We are baking again at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And we will do this for 40 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out dry and clean. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our chocolate glaze. So in a microwave safe bowl, I'm gonna add in some chocolate chips. I'm also gonna use one cup of chocolate chips and this right here is the semi-sweet chocolate chips, okay? So it's different from the one I used um, in the cake, okay? And now to that, I am adding half a stick of butter. This is salted butter, by the way. I am adding half a stick of butter. I, I am gonna pop this in the microwave. I am starting off with one minute and 30 seconds. And then once it comes out, I would use my spatula and just go in and um, stir everything in to get it to melt. And then I would pop it back in at like 30 second intervals until it is nice and melted. Mine only took a little over two minutes and it was all melted. And just go ahead and combine everything. And as you can see, it forms this really, really thick glaze, okay? So this is kind of too thick for me. I wanted a more pourable glaze. So I am going in with some heavy whipping cream and I went in with two tablespoons of that. And then once I mixed everything, it was light enough for me to be able to pour it over a burnt um, cake once it comes out of the oven. And this is the consistency we're working it with, and it's perfect. So now you would notice that it is still warm, so you want to let it sit down and cool. And at this point, I also decided to add a little bit of vanilla extract, just a dash, and mix it all together. And we're done. We're going to put that aside to cool down. And just in time, a cake is out of the oven. It's been 40 minutes, and boy, is it beautiful. Look at that. That crumb on the outside is so beautiful. It makes me so, so happy. Y'all, it is so hot right now, so I'm just going to let it sit in the pan and cool down. I let my cake cool down in the pan for at least 30 minutes to an hour before I invert it to um, cool it down further. So as you can see, I coated this pan really good. It slid off so good and the cake was so perfect. You can still see the peaks of chocolate chips all over the cake, which is what I'm here for. So I let the cake cool down all the way to room temperature before we move on to glaze it. How beautiful is this? So now it is time to glaze. The glaze is cool and the, the cake itself is also cool to the touch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this glaze on the cake to my heart desire. And by the way, the amount of glaze we made was perfect for the cake, so I didn't have any left over because sometimes I have leftovers from, from the glaze and it just wastes. But this particular one is just perfect for it. 
and I am happy about that. If you guys are enjoying this video, please show me some love by hitting on that like button. It lets me know that you enjoy the video and it also, you know, helps the video to be pushed out so that more people can see the recipe and benefit from it. Also, check out the description box below. Click anywhere on the title of the video that would open up a text box. That's the description. It has a link to the direct recipe. It has a link to the website and other useful links. Now, I'll let my glaze sit and harden up a little bit for about 30 minutes before I cut into it. And boy, look at that shine from that butter. It is so delightful. Now I'm gonna cut into it as usual so we can see what we are working with. And boy, was it perfect. You can see the chocolate chips suspended all over the cake and that glaze was perfect. The crumb on the outside, the bomb. Y'all, let me know if you get to try this. You can tag me on Instagram or Facebook. My handle is Mansa Queen. And until I catch y'all in the next one, stay safe. I love you all. Bye.